personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Mutual fund commission load front end load. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. We're in the icon left-hand side, Practice Problems tab, and the 1320 Mutual Fund Commission Load Front End Load tab. Also, take a look at the Immersive Reader tool, Practice Problems, typically in the text area too, with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages that either listened to or read in them. We're considering mutual funds, remembering that as individual investors, we could invest in individual stocks and bonds, but most likely we're going to be utilizing tools like mutual funds and ETFs, allowing us to pool our money together in a fund with other investors. The fund manager then investing those funds in a broader array of securities in accordance with the rules of the fund, possibly allowing us more diversification as individual investors than we can get otherwise also remember when you're talking about something like a 401k plan or an ira you don't typically want to think of them as completely separate than other investment tools such as mutual funds because usually you have a mutual fund that is under the umbrella of an ira or a 401k plan or something like that which gives you tax benefits that you have to consider but it also restricts you know, your access to the funds, that's kind of the trade-off. So when you're putting money into the mutual fund and buying mutual funds, you can apply similar kind of rules oftentimes to when you're buying other securities such as stocks, but you wanna make sure you're wrapping your mind around the fact that you're applying these concepts to the purchase of a fund, the fund then holding on to other securities within the fund. So when we're managing the fund or you're thinking about a mutual fund, there are different kinds of fees that are going to be involved with the fund. Obviously, the fund has to basically take care of just the managing of the fund. Those fees could vary depending on how much leeway you are giving to the fund manager to be able to pick and choose uh, different securities within the fund. So the more leeway you're giving to the manager, the more you need a professional fund manager, the more they're gonna basically charge as a fee to the fund most likely. Or you might be on the other side of things and say, look, I don't want the fund manager to have a lot of leeway. I just want to have an, an indexed fund tying the fund to say an index, the averaging tools that we use in some way that really limits the fund manager's capacity to pick and choose and you really just need a fund manager to kind of try to tie out uh, the investments in the fund to the index which still means you're going to have fees but they might be lesser we also could have fees on the front end and we could have fees basically on the back end when you buy them or when you sell them so you want to keep these kind of concepts in mind when investing in the mutual fund okay so we're going to say that we have an investment that we're going to invest in sixty thousand dollars we're concentrating here on the commission load when purchase front end load so this is the type of of charge that you could get when you're purchasing the fund which you could see here is basically a commission now you may be able to avoid that kind of charge depending on who you're buying uh, the fund from so you want to keep in mind whether or not you have a commission load basically you're paying kind of like a broker for the purchase of the fund or could you go directly to the source of the fund for example and possibly not be paying the commission load once again this is one of the three kind of possible charges we can think of as a fund right you got the front end load when you purchase the fund which is kind of like a commission that you want to consider if you can avoid that commission if at all possible you've got the management of the fund which is generally going to be going ongoing as you own the fund you would think as you're paying for the management of the different assets within the fund which will be dependent upon how much control you have uh, given to the manager of the fund and then you could have the back end fees when you sell the fund which possibly could be applicable if for example they want you to hold on to the fund for some time frame so you can imagine a situation where if you buy and sell the fund very quickly that that's something that they don't want to happen so they might charge you when you sell the fund so if you if we then just calculate if there is a commission and we put sixty thousand dollars the calculation would of course be straightforward if they charge us the 6.2 percent then what we would be paying the one-time charge that we would have would be the 3270 which is simply the 60,000 times 0.062 
And so that's we're thinking that's the one time charge that we want to consider. Are we paying that? That might have our, our affect our decision making process. Is there any way that we can avoid that kind of, of charge? And then consider if there are any other kind of fees that are involved, including the fund maintenance uh, kind of charges, comparing that to other similar types of investments. And if there's any back end charges for us when we sell the fund uh, that might have a kind of time frame restriction on it, we'll talk more about those in future presentations.